Nande, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namane, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Gauravani Pricharine, Nirvisesha Shunyavadi, Paschacha Deshatarine. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nesta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki. We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, chapter number 13, entitled Brahma, Stealing the Boys and Calves. Beginning text 23. Am I right? Yeah? 23. Huh? Three verses. 23, 24, 25. Mm -hmm. Tato nipan majalepana Lankara raksha tila san Samlalita Swacharitai Praharshayan Shayamgato Yama Yamena Madhava Taton ripon mardana majalepana Lankara raksha tilaka sanadi bihi Samlalita swa charitai praharshayan Sayam gato yama nime namadhava Taton ripan mardana majan lepana Lankara rak Lankara raksa tilaksasana debi Samlalitai Swacharitai Praharshayan Sayamgato Yama Yamena Madhava Tanani Vas Prabhu
Taton ripan mardana ma chanatlipana Lankara raksha tilaka sanadhibi Samlalita swacharita praharshayan Sayam gato yaman nimena madhava Chalangi. Taton ripan mardana ma chalepana Lankara raksha tilaka sanadibi Samlalita tsua charita vipashayan Swayam gato yamanyamena madhava Tata Thereafter Nripa O King Maharaj Parikshit Unmardana by, mas by massaging them with oil. Maja, by bathing. Lepana, by smearing, the by smearing the body with oil and sandalwood. Alankara, by decorating with ornaments. Raksha, by chanting protective mantras. Tilaka, by decorating the body with tilak marks in 12 places. Asana Adibi, and by feeding them sumptuously. Samlalita, in this way cared for by the mothers. Swa acharitai by their characteristic behavior. Praharsha Praharshayas making the mothers very much pleased. Sayam, evening, Gata, arrived, Yama, Yamena, at the time of each, as the time of each activity passed, Madhava, Lord Krishna. Translation, thereafter, O Maharaj Parikshit, as required according to the scheduled round of his pastimes, Krishna returned in the evening, entered the house of each of the cowherd boys, and engaged exactly like the former boys, thus cultivating their mothers with transcendent, oh, thus enlivening their mothers with transcendental pleasure. The mothers took care of the boys by massaging them with oil, bathing them, smearing their bodies with sandalwood pulp, decorating them with ornaments, chanting protective mantras, decorating their bodies with tilak, and giving them food. In this way, the mothers served Krishna personally. No purport, we'll read text 24. Translation, thereafter all the cows entered their different sheds and began mooing loudly, mooing, moo, moo, come on cows, moo, yeah, mooing loudly, right, calling for their respective calves, better watch out, some calves will come running up the stairs, yeah. When the calves 
When the calves arrived, the mothers began licking the calves' bodies again and again and profu profusely feeding them with the milk flowing from their milk bags. Purport. All the dealings between the calves and their respective mothers taking care of them were enacted by Krishna himself. We'll read text 25. Translation. Previously, from the very beginning, the gopis had motherly affection for Krishna. Indeed, their affection for Krishna exceeded even their affection for their own sons. In displaying their affection, they had thus distinguished between Krishna and their sons. But now that distinction disappeared. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki. The distinction between one's own son and another's son is not unnatural. Many elderly women have motherly affection for the sons of others. They observe distinctions, however, between those other sons and their own. But now the elderly gopis could not distinguish between their own sons and Krishna. For since their, their own sons had been taken by Brahma, Krishna had expanded as their sons. Therefore, their extra affection for their sons, who were now Krishna himself, was due to bewilderment resembling that of Brahma. Previously, the mothers of Sridham, Sudama, Subal, and Krishna's other friends did not have the same affection for one another's sons. But now the gopis treated all the boys as their own. Sukadeva Goswami, therefore, wanted to explain this increment of affection in terms of Krishna's bewilderment of Brahma, the gopis, the cows, and everyone else. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're hearing this very well-known pastime of Lord Brahma being bewildered by the potency of Lord Krishna. Of course, not only Brahma was bewildered, but the gopis and the cows were also bewildered. And so Sukadeva Goswami is pointing out the increase in affection which was shown The cows, when their calves came to them, the cows had more love for their calves because Krishna is coming in the form of their calf. And similarly, the mothers of the cowherd boys had more affection for their children because their children are now Krishna. But they don't know it. The calves don't know it. 
the cows don't, well, the cows don't know it. The calves know. The calves are all Krishna. But the cowherd boys, they're also Krishna. And the cowherd mother, the cowherd boys' mothers, they're thinking, my son. But actually, it's Krishna. So the point is, the dear most lovable object of everyone is Krishna. There's no one we love more than Krishna. We're thinking, you know, the woman is naturally thinking, my child, my son, like that. Natural affection is there. But actually, they don't really know who their child is. They don't understand who is the child. There was that famous article which appeared in Back to Godhead, I think it was Brahmananda Swami wrote it. He was telling how uh, there's some institute in USA and they were doing research in communication with animals. And they were, you know, they were having like, you know, some scientists that do this kind of research, you know, try to communicate with animals, get animals to have conversations with them and different things. And so they, this, these people were doing this thing with the monkeys, uh, having communication with them, a bit easier with monkeys, near to the human species. So what happened one time, one of the monkeys died. So after one of the monkeys died, then they asked the other monkey, you know, what happened to your friend? Where did he go? The, 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 the researcher was making a message like this to the monkey. So the monkey was asked where his friend had gone. So what did he, he pointed like that. He said, my friend, he's gone down in the ground. Because maybe the monkey saw them bury the body of the dead monkey. So he thought his friend has gone in the ground. No monkey could not understand there's a soul in the body beyond the intelligence of the animal to understand that there's a spirit soul. So people who are in that bodily concept of life, they can only understand life and death. And they think at time of death you go in the coffin. But Prabhupada, give, Prabhupada quotes uh, Plato, was it? Plato was given hemlock to drink as a death sentence. And when they asked him, what should we do with you after you die? So he said, well, you have to catch me first. You have to find me. He could understand because he knew, he, he was convinced in the existence of the soul. But ordinary materialistic people, they cannot understand. Krishna consciousness takes this whole concept a little higher because we understand not only that we're a soul, but we have to also understand that there's a relationship with the Supreme Soul and there's a, another soul within the heart of every living entity. Not simply one soul, but the Super Soul is also there. Krishna expands himself into the heart of every living entity. So the person who we actually love, who we actually care for more than anybody else, is Lord Krishna. But because we're bewildered by the material energy, and material energy means Krishna's energy. It's Krishna's yoga maya, which is bewildering everyone. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, Naham prakasha sarvatma yoga maya samavrita. Mudu yam nabijanati lokamama jamavyayam. Lord Krishna is saying, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. 
For them I am covered by my eternal creative potency. That potency is yoga maya. Yoga maya covers up and it can also reveal, can act in different ways as Krishna desires. Just like sometimes Krishna, in, we will, just now Krishna is covering up everything. Nobody knows, the, the cowherd women, they don't know it's Krishna. The cows don't know it's Krishna. And Brahma also, he doesn't know. But in a little while Brahma will come back and Krishna will move the curtain, open the curtain of Yoga Maya and he'll let Brahma see. And you'll see Krishna in his forearm forms and you'll see everything, Krishna everywhere and the potency, you'll see the power of Krishna and Brahma, Brahma's mind will just be completely overwhelmed. And then Krishna will close the curtain again of Yoga Maya and you'll come back again and there'll be only Krishna. The forearm forms will all be gone. So this is Krishna's Yoga Maya. And so he covers up for the conditioned souls. He's covering everything. They cannot understand the actual nature and the identity of the individual. They're thinking the body. People think they have a relationship with someone. They do not actually know who is that person. They simply identify with the body. They know from the picture. They see the painting, oh yes, it's him, it's my father, or it's my brother, like the, we see someone. We have no idea who that person actually is. We don't know. Because we have had many bodies, as Krishna tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, when Arjuna is trying to understand Krishna, how could you speak this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to the sun god? The sun god is so much senior to you in age. You and I, Arjuna is telling Krishna, you and I are the same age. How could you give this knowledge to the sun god? But Lord Krishna says, Bahuni me vyatitani janmani tavi charjuna. Many, many births both you and I have had, O Arjuna. I can remember all of them, but you cannot, O Arjuna. This is the difference between Krishna and us. Krishna remembers everything. He knows everything. We don't. We forget everything. We forget the previous lives. We're only thinking this life. So, this relationship which we have with Krishna is actually there within everyone. We say love for Krishna is in everyone's heart. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Shadyo Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chiti Kori Heudai. Love of Krishna is in everyone's heart. Just like these cowherd women, they have more affection for the cowherd boys. More, they're thinking it's their own son, but actually it's Krishna. And they're showing more affection. And similarly also, even the cows are giving so much milk, more milk than usual. They're giving because it's their calf, but their calf is actually Krishna. So the one who we love more than anyone else is Krishna. But we don't know it. We forget. We find so many others to replace our loving relationship. Prabhupada writes, it's human nature to have love. If we don't have love in a, a relationship with people, then we get a pet dog. And you see the people with their pet dog or their pet cat and they become so absorbed in that relationship with their animals. This is uh, not the proper way to make use of the human form of life. Life is actually meant for cultivating our relationship with Krishna. 
awakening our Krishna consciousness. Therefore, Krishna consciousness movement tries to give everybody the opportunity to hear about Krishna. Initially, how do we hear from the devotees? We, the Sankirtan party comes by, the chanting of the holy name. Uh, when the devotees first went to the UK and George Harrison helped them to make that recording of the Maha Mantra and they released that Maha Mantra and at that time you know there was a whole chart they had records of who's selling the most records and the Hare Krishna Mantra was actually number one in some countries it was so popular people liked it some countries people were so eager to hear and to take pleasure in the chanting of the holy name so Krishna consciousness is there within everyone it just has to be awakened Jananda Das Goswami our God brother he wrote a book about animals in Krishna consciousness and he was describing different animals who had taken an interest in Krishna consciousness he said some one cow used to come by and sit down and listen to the Bhagavatam every morning <laughs> another chicken used to come to RT every day <laughs> these different, <laughs> different indications animals having an interest in Krishna consciousness in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Sanatana Goswami gives a quote from the Varaha Purana and he describes how one hunter was taking, no, one Brahmana was bathing in the water and at the same time chanting his mantras. So he was chanting the holy name and at that time a tiger came and the tiger was thinking to eat the Brahman, to taste the Brahman's blood. And just as the tiger was about to jump on the Brahman, a hunter came and shot the tiger. And the Varaha Purana describes the tiger got liberated because he was hearing the Brahmana chant mantras. Wonderful. The power of the mantras, the holy name, right? So it was interesting reading this, uh, the first verse which I read today, which was describing how the mothers were showing their affection and care for the children and some of the things which they did like putting tilak on their bodies decorating the 12 temples on the body and then also chanting protective mantras for them after Krishna had killed Putana and mother Yashoda found Krishna playing on the body of Putana then she picked up Lord Krishna and took him home and she did all kinds of purificatory mantras to protect her son and she used things like uh, cow dung and the tail of the cow and different things to do different rituals all for the protection of her child this was the Vedic culture you can see the culture today, how it's degraded. What, do, what would a mother do to protect her child today? They will give the child maybe some, some medicine or some, take this medicine or something will protect you. You know, now we've got this COVID virus going around. The mothers will want to protect their children they give them the mask to put over their face, you know. Is that going to protect them? That's not the real protection, right? The real protection comes from Krishna. Just like in the sixth canto, we have Narayana Kavacha. Want to protect yourself? Put the Kavacha all over the body. So, Tilak, <laughs> it's a good kavacha. And 
different mantras. Also, you can place the different mantras around the body. You get protection. So we can, we can protect ourselves by taking shelter of the Vedic culture from Krishna consciousness. Understanding this pastime, of course, is very bewildering for people. One, one man told me he found it very difficult to accept all these miracles of Lord Krishna. All these miracles of Lord Krishna. I told him, I said, I think you've not properly studied the first two cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. If you study the earlier cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, then by the time you come to this tenth canto, it should be much easier for you to accept that Lord Krishna has achintya shakti. He has inconceivable powers. If we try to understand Krishna by our limited mind and senses, that will never work. We are told, Atashi Krishna Nabadi Nabaved Gramindriani Sevan Mukhi Jiva Do Swayam Eva Spuratiyada. Krishna cannot be understood by the material senses, but he reveals himself through service. When we do service, beginning with Jiva Dal, the tongue, we use the tongue to chant and to take prasadam. That's a start, but we have to also hear, we have to understand Krishna's, uh, his Shrishti Shakti, the power of creation, how Krishna creates this whole cosmic manifestation, how he expands himself into the different Purusha avatars and the Guna avatars, and how he all this phenomenal material world is all manifested by Krishna's inconceivable potency. Of course, people are trained to be scientific. They're all empirical. They want to measure everything. We should be able to verify this. This has to be proved by science. But they do not understand who is the greatest scientist? The science is all coming from Krishna. He is the one behind this cosmic manifestation, all of this energy. And then they say, if there is such a thing as inconceivable potency, then show me, where is it? But every day you can see it. Every day you see the light of the sun the inconceivable potency, the heat and the light which is coming from the sun every day. It's inconceivable amounts of energy which light up the whole universe. There are many examples of inconceivable potency within this material creation. Another example is people used to think that you could sterilize something simply by putting it in the flame, heating it up. They thought all the germs, all the bacteria are killed. You just put it in the heat, make it very hot, boil it. You know, like water, you boil the water and you, you, you get it to boiling temperature and that, then okay, now you can drink it. It's okay for drinking everything. But later on, they discovered that there are different living entities which live even in fire, that they're not burned. We're thinking we can kill everything. We can burn everything. We do not know that there are living entities who live in the fire. People wonder, how could there be a person on the sun planet? It's so hot. Oh, he has a fire body. The sun god is there. He has a fire body. In the same way, there are living entities who can live in the fire. They have suitable bodies, just like the fish. They can live in the depth of the ocean. They have the suitable body to live in those conditions. Prabhupada describes 
there are certain poisons. They're poisonous to humans, but within that poisonous substance, there are living entities, living, who eat off the poison, who live on the poison. They live, little worms, they live within the poison. We have to understand, there are many phenomena beyond the power of our limited thinking. There are inconceivable powers. Some things are so tiny, so small, we cannot begin to isolate them. The scientists were trying to trap one tiny particle and they had this 30 foot long lead chamber. Lead is the most dense of all materials. You pass light through it, you know, it, lead is so thick that practically nothing can get through it. But this particle was so small, it came right through 30 feet of lead. So amazing. This, this, this is achincha shakti. There are these kind of powers just beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension. And Krishna, he possesses all of these inconceivable powers. People think, how could he do all these things? How could he expand himself? We're going to hear how he expands himself. It's all done for the pleasure of his devotees. He doesn't have to expand himself to kill the demons. He can do that very easily. But he likes to please his devotees, just like these cowherd ladies in Vrindavan, they all saw Krishna and they thought, oh, he's such a nice boy. I wish my boy was like that Krishna, right? Sometimes mothers are like that, you know. They'll find fault with their son and say, why don't you be like that boy? Look at that boy. He's such a good boy. He's so well behaved. He's so polite to his mother and he's so caring. You're not like that. Why can't you be like a good... You know, some, the mothers will do like that. They criticize, you know. Do they? I know my mother did. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm such a rascal. <laughs> She'd always say, should be like other boys. Be not, be good, you know. So, so the coward women, they see Krishna. And they think, oh, if only my son was like Krishna. So, Krishna arranges. He gives them all the opportunity to have that experience of having Krishna as their son. Although they, they didn't even know it. That is the wonderful thing. That he could do all of these things without them even knowing it. it of course, it's just inconceivable. But we have to accept that there are things which are inconceivable. There are places on the map nobody has been to, which we have not cultivated, which we have not, we don't even know about it. Even on this planet, they're talking about go other planets. There's so many places on this planet, they cannot explain, they cannot understand. There's some island in the middle of the Pacific and it's got all these statues on it. Uh, how did they get there? Nobody knows. Where did they come from? Nobody knows. It's inconceivable. In England, we have Stonehenge, right? Stonehenge. Incredible, huge stone structures. How did they get there? Where did they come from? Nobody knows. They, they have many theories. They don't know. Even you look at the pyramids. They're incredible architectural structure. It's so amazing that ordinary uh, building contractors say, we could never build anything like this. We could never do it. 
It's just inconceivable how they could manage to make a structure like that. And they did it so long ago. So there's so many things beyond our own comprehension. We want to understand Krishna. There is a way by which we can understand and that way is by serving, by doing service. Then Lord Krishna can reveal himself to the devotee. Being pleased with the service of the devotee, Lord Krishna reveals himself. He can remain inconceivable beyond our powers to understand. But if he wants, he can reveal himself also. Just as he's going to do. He's going to reveal himself to Brahma for a little while. He, he's, he can do these things. So Krishna has that power to cover himself up and then to reveal himself. Cover up and then reveal. This is all going on by his inconceivable powers, his inconceivable shakti, to bewilder the minds of everyone. We need to hear these pastimes to increase our love for Krishna. Hearing about these pastimes, we shouldn't think, oh, this is too much. We should think how wonderful Krishna is. We should think how amazing, what an incredible personality is. We should want to know more about him and to come closer to him and to become more absorbed in him. Thinking about how sweet all of his pastimes are and how he has this amazing ability to do all of these incredible pastimes and activities for the pleasure of his devotees. In this way, we can try to increase our Krishna consciousness. Any questions, comments? Maharaj, question from online. A few days ago, I asked if the spirit soul can expand with individual consciousness for the pleasure of Krishna. I read a, I read a quote from Srila Prabhupada who says that this spirit soul can expand into many different bodies. And Srila Prabhupada also says that there are incarnations of devotees as well as incarnations of Krishna. This is the power of the spirit soul. Can you please explain more on this matter? Because I never knew before that the spirit soul can expand and it took, and it, it is such an interesting topic. Thank you. Your humble servant, Marichi Das. Marichi. <laughs> yeah, interesting comment from Marichi Prabhu. He's asking about spirit souls expanding well we know for example there's a pastime in the tenth canto where Lord Krishna is going to visit uh, two persons he went to visit Bahulasva and Deva uh, Shruti, Shruti, Shrutadev right there's Bahulasva and Shrutadev and Lord Krishna is coming out from Dwarka and he's coming along with the great sages, right? And he's assembling so many people. And they went, what? Somehow Lord Krishna expands himself, and not only himself, but all the people who are with him, they also expand. And each group goes to Bahulashva and Shrutadev at the same time. That how did they do it? Well, everything is all done by the grace of Krishna. Those who are devote, great devotees of Krishna, they're also blessed with the powers of Krishna. Krishna can give them the, that power that they can expand. We know how yogis can expand up to nine times, is it? Nine times or eight times? 
Okay, including himself, nine. He can expand so that there are nine forms. So the yogis can expand, but they're mirror images. Each one has to do the same thing. And I would imagine, is there a soul in each of the forms? Must be. It's moving, has life. It is said, the, the different devotees of Krishna, that they, are all, they can also have the powers of Krishna by the grace of Krishna. Krishna can empower them to act on his behalf. So sometimes for the service of Krishna, they can expand in different places. This is something that one would have to be very careful to use that power in the service of Krishna. You wouldn't want to, you know, if other people, ordinary people, had that power, then they may abuse that power for their own sense gratification. We heard, for example, there's a... Uh, Shankara Acharya, was it Shankara Acharya? He was in meditation. He, he was asked, because Shankara Acharya was lifetime brahmachari, so somebody asked him, they were asking, they were debating, and somebody asked him about life in the Grihastha Ashram. So he had no experience of it. So he sat in meditation and his soul left the body and entered the body of a, a dying king. He entered into the body of the dying king. He took over the dying king's body and he enjoyed householder life. At least, I don't know what enjoyment there was in the householder life, but anyway, he entered into the king's body and he lived in the palace for some time as a king. And, and then after some time, then he just say, okay, I have enough experience of this household alive. Now I go back, enter back into his body, and then he answered all the questions about household alive. And so, so that that was a, the soul leaving the body. Of course, he, he he sat in samadhi. So they, they, the people around, they didn't know. They just thought he's in samadhi. So they waited for the soul to return. So, but Marichi is asking about a soul expanding, that the soul, can, one soul can actually expand to another form. We can have more uh, devotees that way. How, how, how do they do it? I don't know. Do, we, do you know some examples where souls expand, where they appear different times, different places, different devotees, great devotees? They can expand in different places. Yes, right. I, I remember reading also, I remember now, there's at the time of the, uh, at the time of the Krishna's marriage, 16,100 queens, right? He brought them all after he killed the, the, the uh, Omasur and he freed those queens from the jail and they, they had nowhere to go. So Lord Krishna accepted, them, accepted all of them as his wives. So he performed the wedding, 16,100 weddings, all took place simultaneously in different places. And Krishna, Krishna expanded himself, but not only Krishna expanded himself, Vasudevan Devaki also expanded themselves. 
because they have to be there at the marriage of their son. And all the different, lo the different people, they also expanded themselves so that they could be at each of the weddings at the same time. So that, that's described. Arichi Prabhu also find a quote by himself. This is a letter of Srila Prabhupada to Saradiya, Los Angeles. Arjuna and Kunti Devi, but although Arjuna is only one spirit soul who is Arjuna, this spirit soul expands into many different bodies, and thus you can understand that there are also incarnations of devotees as well as incarnations of Krishna. This is the power of the spirit soul, that it is unlimited. Such conception cannot be understood while one is still in the conditioned state. Thank you very much. Nice quote. So, we have to get out of the conditioned state. <laughs> Understand the soul can expand unlimitedly. One soul, Arjuna. One soul. I, I think Vasudev and Devaki, they were at the wedding, Krishna's weddings. One soul can expand. Because the soul is part of Krishna's energy. Tiny sparks. So they can expand. They can Expand if Krishna wants for the service of Krishna, he can do it just like Arjuna. He's doing this wonderful service, going everywhere with Krishna, so Krishna can speak Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna can be there to question, to be put in illusion, for Krishna to instruct him. Okay, any other questions? Not only can they, uh, they expand into many, also different, different souls can come into one body. Who, who different souls can enter, enter one body. Many spirit souls in one body. They can do, yeah. Arjuna, Brahma, Haridas Thakur, Prahlad, they, they Two persons or three persons can enter into one body also. That is in the Yeah. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita all these all the wonderful all these vibhutis that he's explained, they're wonderful for us in the material world, but he said this is just a, a spark of my energy. So material energy is, is is much inferior to the superior energy, which the soul is made of the superior energy. So it may, be, it may be very incomprehensible here, but in this, on the spiritual, you know, with different dimensions, and it's, it's quite possible, feasible, quite easy to do. Okay. Incomprehensible. Well, I'm sure Sadapuddha's books must have something on this. Sadapuddha was into all this kind of stuff. Have to read more. Okay, so we'll stop here. Srila Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, God Premanandi. Back to Brindaki.